What's up YouTube? Welcome to Automotive Life. My name is Lucky and today we're answering the million dollar question. Can you actually get a dealer's license without actually having a physical lot? Now this is probably the most asked question I've ever gotten and the most requested video that I've ever gotten. So I figured I might as well answer this because I've seen so many awful uh, videos on YouTube and half these guys are full of shit. So I just figured I'd set the record straight, let you guys know what to do, how to do it, and the reasons why you actually need a lot and some of the things that are actually gonna go a little bit further beyond. And if you could do me a huge favor and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, that helps me find more amazing people like yourselves that enjoy automotive content. Also, if you feel if you've learned something please smash the subscribe button. I post great content like this all the time. And without any more shameless plugging, let's get into the video. So I, like I stated earlier, this is the most asked question I get over and over again, whether it's online, uh, YouTube, Instagram, or even when we do uh, teaching and coaching events, people keep assuming that you don't need an actual physical location to get your dealer's license. Now, there's a few ways around it. And I'm gonna explain the different things that you're gonna need to know and how everything goes along. But basically, I'm gonna explain the different types of licensing, what goes behind them, and the benefits between each one. Keep in mind that every state is different. So some may have different types of licensing for different names. You may have all of these, or you may only have two of these. So I'm gonna go over each one and let you know the pros and cons of, of each. So the first one is your dealer's license, a traditional dealer's license that just about anybody can get in any state. And this allows you to buy cars at the auction as well as retail to the public. Now, the reason why this one needs to have an actual physical location is because you're dealing with the public and you're dealing with personal information and you're also dealing with banks. So when you become a dealer, you can't get a dealership without having a physical location. Now there's one way around this one, which I'll explain at the end of the video, but the dealer's license is very important. The reason you want a storefront is you need that legitimacy. So this way when people come to buy cars, nobody wants to buy your car while you're sitting in your pajamas in your apartment. They wanna buy from a professional licensed dealer, banks that deal with you. Think about it, if you're a bank and you're lending millions of dollars out to dealers, would you wanna to go to a dealership that actually is like in the back of somebody's uh, driveway or something like that? No, it doesn't work. You wanna be actually have a storefront, which most states require. Now, every state's a little bit different. You could require you know, a large lot to have maybe 10, 15 spaces. Some states only require maybe five. So, you know, when it comes to a dealership, people think that you have to have a really big lot and you have to have all this overhead. In all reality, as long as you can get a decent retail spot and actually publicize the sign that's within a certain size through your DMV regulations, plus you have at least five to 10 spots where you can park a few cars, you can get away with a decent spot from anywhere from like 800 to probably about two grand depending on your state. And that's pretty reasonable. Now, if you get a bigger lot or some of the lots like that we have and you're looking at like 10, 15, $20,000 a month, you know, then it gets a little bit expensive. So if you're just starting off, I would definitely go this route with a smaller one, keep your overhead low. Now let's say you don't really wanna do finance, you just wanna buy cars and sell them, kind of just having fun. This is where you go into the next one, which is your wholesale license. Now your wholesale license allows you to purchase cars at the actual auction, buy them, you know, go through the paperwork, do everything else, but you're not allowed to sell to the general public. So that's the downfall. General public sales is a no-go. So if you get a customer that says, hey, I got five grand right now, I wanna buy this car and drive away, you cannot legally sell them the car. What you have to do is you have to go back to a licensed dealer to make sure that you actually um, do the paperwork. They can submit the sales tax, everything else, and do the paperwork for you. Now, the pros of having a wholesale license is you can literally get a small, in some states, a virtual office, which a lot of people do. You'll see these ads online, get your dealership for $3.99 or whatever else. That's what they're selling you. They're selling you either a wholesale or dealer's license with like a little tiny cubicle, you know, in some other weird state that has very, very loose laws. You always wanna do business in your state with the license. So even let's say you're in California and you don't have the money for a dealership because LA's rent is freaking ridiculous. So you get your wholesale license and you actually set up a small little office and then 
the reason why we want to do this is if you get your wholesaler's license, we could still help you get lines of credit to buy cars because you are still a physical business that's doing business in California. And that's why we want to do it correctly. Don't buy these weird out of state ones. Don't say, oh, all it is is $4.99. I'll do it out of, I think it's like Alabama, Georgia, Florida, all those crazy ones. Don't do it guys. I'm telling you when flooring companies see that banks see that, they will not let you buy. Like here in Vegas, if you show up with like an Atlanta plate or some a Georgia plate or an Alabama plate and you're trying to buy cars, they will automatically cut you off because they know that you're gonna bounce checks. There's nothing here to keep you here and it's just a lot of bad you know, issues that we've had through the years. You don't wanna be associated with that. So make sure you actually take the time and get a local state uh, wholesaler's license. The next one, which depending on your state, it may be called a wholesaler license or a broker license. This may sound like the same thing, but in different states, a wholesaler's license is different. Like broker's license allows you to actually buy cars and physically do paperwork on the customer, but you don't need a storefront. Some states, it's the exact same opposite. So this one is very, very hard for me to explain because like I said, depending on your state laws and regulations, this one is kind of a free for all. But just like this uh, wholesaler license, your dealer's license, you wanna be licensed in your state. You can start off with these two licenses and build your business. You don't have to get a dealership and carry all the overhead. Get a small office, get either your broker's license or your wholesale's license, and you can actually do this. Now, there is a fourth, which pretty much nobody knows about, which I'll share this one with you guys. You're probably wondering what the hell CR is. It's car rental. In some states, especially here in the state of Nevada, if you get a car rental license, you will get a DMV number. Your DMV number goes with your short-term leaser or lesser license, which some states have, some states don't. Um, they'll give you that. With that number, you're gonna have, it's an eight digit number, you take that to auction access, they will give you access and you could purchase cars through the auction. So let's say that you're watching this and you just wanna get a dealer's license so you can buy cars for Turo. You don't have to go out and get a dealer's license, you can get this. Now, there's definitely benefits because if, like I said, you buy a car from the auction and it doesn't work out, let's say it's not that popular, if you have a dealer's license, you could take it right back. But when you're a actual uh, car rental company, you have to pay sales tax the second you buy it and register it. You can't wipe that away. Or with dealer's license, as long as you take it back to the auction and cancel your placard, you're allowed to do that. So, you know, these are the few ways that you can actually um, basically get your license and be legit. It's not that expensive to do any of these. You know, the biggest one I always tell people is your actual location when it comes to your dealership. So now I'm gonna go into the fun stuff. I've actually seen three people get a physical dealer's license without actually having a lot. So I'm gonna explain that one in this next slide. Okay, I'm gonna drop some wisdom on you guys before I actually start this next one. So pretty much, if you're trying to think of the easiest way to get a dealer's license, is just actually physically going to get a dealer's license. Do the right thing. You wanna be a licensed professional to get these types of deals and to get your cars. The reason you wanna be set up correctly and actually have a physical location is because we want you to get signed up with banks, with lenders, stuff that's gonna build your business. You don't wanna do it rinky dinky and have a bunch of issues and basically nobody take you seriously. If you've watched a few of my other videos, I talk about it all the time. You know, if you're a dealer and you wanna be taken seriously by banks, you need to look the part, you need to show the part, you need to actually have a physical location that represents you as a person and as a business. So make sure you get your dealer's license and actually get a rental, or excuse me, a local state one. Don't go out of state, don't hire these weird companies, you know, that's gonna give you a dealer's license from wherever. Just do it the right way and it's really not that expensive. I'm sure if you look and you, you know, you keep searching, you could find something that's affordable. Also, one of the things that most people don't know, and depending on your state, is you're allowed to hang two dealer's licenses in most locations. Go to your local DMV and go up to your friends. Say, hey, look, you know what? You have this big dealership, you know? All I wanna do is hang my license on your wall. I'll give you 500 bucks if I can hang my license on your wall. Do it. Boom, you're good to go. Now you got a great looking spot that banks will look at, that foreign companies will look at that looks professional, but doesn't cost you a lot of money. You know, so you could start out that way. Another thing I'm gonna tell you guys, and I said this a bunch of times, 
Do not, and I repeat, do not buy under somebody else's license. I see this stuff all the time and I make fun of them because I watch cars get repoed, I watch paperwork get screwed up, I watch people get sued. Do not buy cars under anybody else's license. If you're wondering why, this is a perfect example. There's a local dealer here in town that just went out of business last week. So he had a lot of issues with his flooring company and lost all of his cars. So he was in a good spot. He just was, you know, had some financial issues. So he went to one of his friends to get, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollars to purchase vehicles. So he got these vehicles from, you know, the auction, paid cash. His friend invested money into his company, bought these cars, put them on there. His friend held the title thinking he was safe. What happened was um, Next Gear and AFC, his foreign company, saw those cars. They came in and took everything. So even though the customer says, well, look, my, my friend bought them. He has cash. He has the, the titles and everything else. They don't care. They will take all your cars. They will lean them and they won't give them back to you. And so let's say that's you. You're buying cars off somebody else's license and all of a sudden you come to the shop and all of a sudden the tow truck just took all your cars and you're gone. You have no legal rights. And plus, they could sell your car and not pay you. You don't ever buy under somebody's license. I know people are probably watching this like, well, it's my friend, it's my cousin, whatever else. Hey, if that's what you want to do, go for it. For a few dollars more, you can get a wholesaler license or a broker's license. It's not that bad. Now, the next thing I'm going to tell you guys, this is a disclaimer. These are a few ways I saw people get dealer's licenses without actually having a physical location. So the first one, let's just say this is a regular house. I apologize for my drawing. It's not the greatest. This is his two car garage. Now both of these examples I saw in Texas and they're both in rural areas. So this is not something you're gonna get in a major city. So this was his house. You know, he had a small business but there was no places where he could actually do a dealership. So he talked his local county and city into actually letting him keep his dealer's license there. So he had to actually separate his garage, which he did right here. He had to make a separate business entrance. So we're going to go ahead and put that here. He had to make a separate driveway down to the street. So we got some concrete right here. And he had to put up a sign. And do all this stuff through the city through, I think it took him six months of permits and getting the zoning correct and everything else like that. And they allowed him to do business out of his home. Now that was extremely rare and very hard to do. And like I said, this is in rural areas of Texas. You can get away with that. The other one that I've seen also once again was in Texas is the exact same thing. This gentleman had a two acre spread right outside of Austin, Texas. So if you're watching this from Austin, shout out. So, okay, so this is his massive two acre plot. So what he did was this one, uh, this frontage actually touched the road where his house was. The back one also had its own road. So what he did was he actually split his property and switched this, his zoning to commercial and put his dealership in his backyard. So even though technically he just walks into his backyard and starts selling cars, as far as the government and the state's concerned, this property line is separate. This is a commercial property and it is zoned correctly to sell cars out of his thing. Now, right now we're actually talking into him and it's actually building a body shop, an auto repair shop. So he's gonna have a full facility with the whole acre spread. And he, I think he bought two acres. I think it was for like $90,000, which is ridiculous. I would die for that. But, um, but this is about 30 minutes outside of Austin, Texas. This is actually what he has. So stuff like this does exist. So you technically can get a dealer's license without having a lot, but you most likely need to own the property. So like I said, don't do it the quick way. Actually get the correct way of getting your licensing. Now, if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. I personally answer every single one. If you need any type of help, coaching, consulting, my email and everything else is down below. I love to help. Um, I appreciate if you ask most of the comments in the comment section because when you guys keep asking me the same question, I'll answer it like 37 times. Put it in the comment section below so if I answer this, everybody else sees it and they totally understand. Also, if you have any questions or video ideas, please put them in the comment section below. I truly appreciate it. Once again, if you felt like you learned something, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe. But like I said, I'm going to be posting great content like this all the time and we'll see you next time.